official party and remain standing for the national anthem of the United States of America and the invocation offered this morning by Chaplain Major Sean Gee. pray together. Almighty God, we seek your blessing upon today's ceremony and everyone attending. We especially give thanks for our partner nations and the faithful service of these three leaders to their countries. We recognize and are humbled by the fact that we stand upon the shoulders of leaders like these, leaders that have gone before us modeling excellence, courage, and professionalism. As we reflect today upon their contributions and service, may it inspire us all to be better leaders for our nation's sons and daughters. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to the United States Army Command and General Staff College International Hall of Fame induction ceremony. In 1973, the United States Army Command and General Staff College, the Kansas City chapter of the Military Order of World Wars, and the Alumni Association, now known as the CGSC Foundation, jointly established the International Hall of Fame. The Hall's purpose is to provide a prestigious and visible means of recognition for international graduates who through military merit have attained one of the highest positions of importance in their respective countries' armed forces, or who have held an equivalent position by rank or responsibility in a multinational military organization. To date, we have inducted 271 international graduates from 72 different nations into the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College's International Hall of Fame. Fifteen of those inductees served as either head of state or head of government for their respective nation. Today we honor and welcome three distinguished graduates into the International Hall of Fame. They are Lieutenant General Leo Bulin, Commander of the Royal Netherlands Army, CGSOC Class of 1998. Major General Anthony Anderson, former Chief of Defense Staff now National Security Advisor for Jamaica, CGSOC Class of 2000, and Lieutenant General Dr. Dennis Gillenspoor, Chief of Defense Staff and Commander, Armed Forces, Sweden, CGSOC Class of 2001. It's now my pleasure to introduce the official party for today's ceremony. Starting at your right is our host, Lieutenant General Michael Lundy, Commanding General of the U.S. Army Combined Arms Center and Commandant of the Command and General Staff College. To the right of the Commandant is Mr. Michael Hockley, 
Chairman of the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College Foundation. And to his right is Captain James Davis, U.S. Coast Guard retired, representative of the Greater Kansas City Chapter of the Military Order of the World Wars. Our award bearer is U.S. Marine Sergeant Thomas Noel. We extend a warm welcome to several distinguished guests with us today. Lieutenant General Robert Arder, U.S. Army retired, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army for the State of Kansas, and Mrs. Arder. Mrs. Michael Lunday, sp spouse of the Commandant, United States Army Command and General Staff College. Mrs. Leo Bulin, spouse of the Commander of the Royal Netherlands Army. Ms. Justine Henzel, partner of the National Security Advisor for Jamaica. Mrs. Dennis Gillenspor, spouse of the Chief of Defense Staff, Swedish Armed Forces, their daughters Josephine, and Carolyn, and their son Gustav. Colonel Roger Donlan, United States Army retired, Medal of Honor recipient, and Mrs. Donlan. General Officers, Commanders, Command Sergeants Major, International Liaison Officers, and the leadership of the Kansas City People to People and Leavenworth Lansing Area Chamber of Commerce International Organizations, thank you all for joining us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commandant of the United States Army Command and General Staff College, Lieutenant General Michael Lundy. Well, thank you, and thanks for being here this morning, and to all of our distinguished guests and visitors, and especially the families of our inductees today, it's really great to have you here. And, and these are very important uh, events as we think about the legacy that these three general officers have left for all of us to follow. And as we think back in the history since 1894, where we brought international officers into the Command and General Staff College, and the benefit of that, and today with 91 different nations represented, over 140 international officers in this crowd. I would tell you that the relationships that we build through time are absolutely critical as we face the challenges that we see today in our world. And all three of these senior leaders who've risen to the highest level in their armed forces um, have contributed to that, this partnership that we've had over the years. And you can look through their resumes, but they've served in Afghanistan and Bosnia They've served around the Caribbean as we've dealt with multiple humanitarian crises there. And, and all of these, you know, this complex environment that we operate in, the relationships that they built um, and established with us as partners and friends have absolutely been essential to us being able to maintain peace and security uh, throughout the world. So I'm very honored today to be able to induct all three of these, and I will talk individually about each one as we proceed forward. But I would tell you that they are absolutely superior leaders and they represent everything that we think about when we think about how we look at our army and our profession, the character, the commitment, and the competence that we think about in leaders. All three of these do exemplify that. And our first inductee, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant General Leo Bolin from the Royal Netherlands. Uh, currently serving as the, uh, the chief of the Netherlands Army. And he's got a distinguished career in history through time. Not only did he come here, and I think he was, uh, well, he may have been in the best CGSC class. <laughs> it's arguable. Uh, they've got one black mark on the class, but that was the class that I was in. And so besides me being in there in the Army, having a sense of humor that I'm a three-star general, you were absolutely were in the best uh, CGSC class. But he went back, he served as an instructor in, in their college. He made multiple deployments. He served in Kabul with ISAF. He also served in Bosnia. Um, and he also served in a number of operations roles throughout NATO and on multiple joint staffs. So I would tell you that absolutely, we're very honored. You're absolutely deserving of this recognition today. And if we could, we'll go ahead and publish the orders. Please keep your seat as we read the induction order. Attention to orders. The United States Army Command and General Staff College, be it known that Lieutenant General Leo Bulin, Commander of the Royal Netherlands Army, in recognition of outstanding military achievement and service to his country's armed forces, has been inducted into the United States Army Command and General Staff College International Hall of Fame. In testimony whereof, 
and by authority vested in us, we do confer upon him this honor, given at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, this 12th day of October, 2017. General Lundy and General Bulin now unveil the photograph that we will place in the International Hall of Fame. General Lundy will now present General Bulin framed photos of both Bell Hall and the Lewis and Clark Center to commemorate his induction. Mr. Hockley will now present a gift to General Bulin, designating him an honorary life constituent of the United States Army Command and General Staff College Foundation. <laughs> Captain Davis will now make a presentation on behalf of the Military Order of the World Wars, signifying General Bulin's status as an inductee into the International Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Bulin. Jim, thank you very much. <laughs> General Lundy, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it's a great honor for me to be inducted in the Inter International Officers Hall of Fame. And I was walking around for 20 years ago in these corridors and I saw all these pictures. I never figured out that I would be hanging there in 20 years after. But now you're there and that's something that you do not do by your own because all the men and women in the army are doing their jobs daily with passion and dedication and only that's the reason why you get something done as the commander of the army. Nothing goes from itself and I thank them very much for that. Um, but not only that, we had great support here when we came to America, when we came to Leavenworth. First of all, our instructors, it's interesting to see that coming from the Netherlands, you have to come to the United States to find out that Prince Morris of the Netherlands is being seen as one of the great captains of strategy. They teach that in America and not in the Netherlands. <laughs> then of course my classmates from 3A, you've seen them on the picture before. Uh, we had a great class, we helped each other where we could. And one of them on the picture is still here and he introduced me just a minute ago, which is Jim Fain and he is now the leader of the International Officer Division. And, uh, it's great friends, and it's still great friends after 20 years. Thank you very much for that. Then we have our sponsors. Our military sponsors, Mr. Jeannie and Chris Butik from Leavenworth. We're having a great barbecue this afternoon. Um, these people help you through the whole year. And you cannot imagine what that means for something coming from abroad to help you in this society. That's wonderful. Um, there's only one person missing today, unfortunately, and that's Mrs. Marjorie Howard. She was the landlady of the Dutch officers for more than 35 years. And she passed away last year at the age of 93. And until the last day of her life, she always said she was helping the real elderly people, which is amazing. She was a great American. Uh, this shows us the bond between America, between you people and our country. And I share that bond very much and we need it even more in the years that they in front of us because the world is becoming more complex actually every year. Um, I forgot to mention one person, and that's my wife. She's here <laughs> in the audience. <laughs> Talking about support, we did it together 20 years ago and we still do it together right now. And I might advise you to thank your family because without your family, you cannot do what you do as a military. 
and advise you to thank your family a little bit more than I did in the past, and I promise I'll do it more often in the future. Standing here at this point of your career, you realize that most years are behind you, only a few years to go. But that's part of life, and there's a new generation taking over to lead the nation's armies. And a lot of the leaders are sitting in this class right now, and you are going to lead in the next few years. And in five minutes that I'm allowed to speak, I'm not going to change the world. But I just want to give you some thoughts that I learned here and I took with me that might help you in the rest of your career. First of all, when I was here as a major, I developed a one-liner, which is you've majors for major problems and generals for general problems. And even now as a general, I still believe that's true. Because just look at yourself. Most people here in this room think they're quite capable. And yes, you are. But still remember that when you were a general. So give your majors room to do their job, give them room to take initiative, and also allow them to make mistakes. That will help your army. Second lesson is international cooperation is, was, is, and will be essential. Just listen to the very impressive speech that General Milley gave at the AUSA just two days ago. Because you have to know each other before you need each other. And then you will see that you see a lot of your classmates later in operations where you work together. And I just want to conclude with one observation or remark. The most precious thing I took away from this course 20 years ago was a poster. That was just a piece of paper, but still hanging in my office all these 20 years in front of me that I can see it every day. And if you look at it, I don't know whether the field manual 100-5 still exists, but you see a picture of a soldier who has seen combat, is staring in the future, staring into nothing, and it says he doesn't know FM 100-5, he doesn't know what IPB means, he doesn't even know that you exist. And underneath it says, do your work well, battle staff officer, his life depends on your skills. And that's all about it. We are leading soldiers, and we have to do it the best way we can. I wish you all the best in your course, all the best in your military careers, and above all, happiness with your family. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, once more, the Commandant. Well, again, I'm honored for our second uh, inductee, uh, Major General Anthony uh, Anderson, who really rose to the chief of the Jamaican Defense Forces, but also now National Security Advisor. And if you look at his storied history, not only has he served throughout the Caribbean from a security force assistance perspective and establishing regional security, but he's also spoken many times and been on a number of panels with the United Nations and a number of other security cooperation uh, venues throughout, uh, throughout the Western world. Uh, again, he's really focused from a security perspective, a regional stability perspective, currently having forces that are currently deployed assisting with hurricane relief throughout the Caribbean. And uh, it is truly our honor to be able to induct you today into the International Hall of Fame. But we'll Attention to orders. The United States Army Command and Drill Staff College. Be it known that Major General Anthony Anderson, Chief of Defense Staff Jamaica, in recognition of outstanding military achievement in service to his country's armed forces, has been inducted into the United States Army Command and Drill Staff College International Hall of Fame. In testimony whereof and by authority vested in us, we do confer upon him this honor given at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, this 12th day of October, 2017. General Lundy and General Anderson will now unveil the photograph that we will place in the International Hall of Fame. <laughs> General Lundy will now present General Anderson framed photos of both Bell Hall and the Lewis and Clark Center to commemorate his induction.
Mr. Hockley will present a gift to General Anderson designating him an honorary life constituent of the United States Army Command and General Staff College Foundation. And now Captain Davis will present a certificate on behalf of the Military Order of the World Wars signifying General Anderson's status as an inductee in the International Hall of Fame. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Anderson. General Lundy, uh, Mr. Hockley, and Captain Davis, fellow inductees, faculty and students of the Command and General Staff College and Combined Arms Center, sponsors, friends, and families, good morning. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here this morning and to be recognized in this way. This induction doesn't only honor me, but also the numerous persons who have supported me worked with me and for me, and those mentors along the way that demanded a lot from me, recognizing that there's no steel without fire. They ensured that I received the military training and education through this institution and others to provide the foundation of knowledge required for higher leadership. In 1999, when the Millennium Class arrived, we were starting our course in the 20th century, and we were going to finish it in the 21st century. We were starting our course in the second millennium, and we were going to finish it in the third millennium. This created an excitement of new possibilities and opportunities for better technology and new thinking and how things are done. As military people, we also knew that there would be new threats and the rate of change of our circumstances would increase. Globalization would become an ever-growing phenomenon, and the necessity for shared approaches and imperative as traditionally defined threats and responses gave way to new ones. Our expectations have been met and exceeded. We have seen rapid shifts on the world stage that have changed our way of life and caused us to recalculate our threats and vulnerabilities. And we are all tied to our technology in a way that we didn't foresee. Our phones are threatening to get smarter than we are. And we have access to more information more quickly than ever. It means, therefore, that our new military thinking and education has had to evolve to encompass both the new threat realities and also to embrace the new opportunities presented through technology. From the discussions I've had since being back here, I've learned that students are being given the time to reflect and analyze, and having seen the changes in the facilities, it's quite a change. <laughs> As you compare this building with the old Bell Hall, it is clear that the requirements of the 21st century warrior are understood and embraced. The military education at CGSC gave me the tools that allowed me to better navigate the past 17 years. But equally importantly, the rich mix of nationalities on the course gave global context and global contacts, which have benefited me since, particularly as CDS and now as NSA. The generosity and openness with which international students are received through the sponsors program, and the fierce patriotism exhibited by persons in and out of uniform allowed us to see the best of the United States. Thank you, General Lundy, and the Hall of Fame Committee for this honor, to my sponsors who are here, and friends who attended this morning, thank you for taking the time to be here. 
to the U.S. Embassy team in Jamaica represented here by Colonel Raju. Thank you for all your support, both here and back in Jamaica. And to Colonel Chapito, who has been a most gracious host, a heartfelt thank you also. And last but not least, thank you, Justine, for being here with me. I know you've put a project on hold to be here. I'm really grateful for all your support. God bless you all. I may have messed the narrator up, but we'll, we'll drive on. So our third inductee is Lieutenant General Dennis Gillenspor, who's currently uh, serving as the chief of the uh, Swedish Army. When Dennis was here, he did an MMAS. And he's actually, if you look at his resume, he's achieved probably as much academically as he has in the military. Currently a holder of a PhD. And uh, he received the Eisenhower Award when he was here uh, at the Command and General Staff College. Uh, not only has he been deployed in multiple locations around the world, Bosnia, the Sudan, and Afghanistan, but he also sits on a number of, of boards throughout Europe, security force assistance boards, as well as other uh, activities throughout uh, the European Union and NATO. Uh, so we're truly honored, and you're certainly most, direct, most deserving of this recognition today, and we'll go ahead and post the orders. Attention to orders. The United States Army Command and General Staff College. Be it known that Lieutenant General Dennis Gielenspor, Chief of Defense Staff and Commander Armed Forces of Sweden, in recognition of outstanding military achievement in service to his country's armed forces, has been inducted into the United States Army Command and General Staff College International Hall of Fame. In testimony whereof and by authority vested in us, we do confer upon him this honor, given at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, this 12th day of October, 2017. General Lundy and General Gillenspor now unveil the photograph that we will place in the International Hall of Fame. General Lundy will now present General Gillenspor framed photos of both Bell Hall and the Lewis and Clark Center to commemorate his induction. Mr. Hockley will present a gift to General Gillenspor, designating him an honorary life constituent of the United States Army Commander and General Staff College Foundation. And now Captain Davis will present a certificate on behalf of the Military Order of World Wars, signifying General Gielenspor's status as an inductee into the International Hall of Fame. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Dennis Gielenspor. <clears throat> General Lumbee, distinguished audience, it's of course a, a great privilege and honor to be here today. And um, just to be on the safe side, I think I'll start by um, recognizing my family, Helena, and, and, and my great family. Without their support, this wouldn't have been possible. And also, of course, uh, sponsors and, and uh, those who, who helped us uh, during this uh, formative year. Uh, just by being here, I think we achieved something. It's clear, it should be clear that it's not only repeat offenders that return to Leavenworth. <laughs> uh, I only have a few minutes, so I'll share just one uh, memory with you. And uh, that was uh, uh, the in-processing. And uh, remember, this was at the time uh, when uh, books came in print form. 
not PDF. Uh, so we were standing in line, issued uh, the field manuals, this stack on the bottom, uh, the field manual how to tie your boots, and on the top how to start a nuclear war. Basically everything in between. And uh, the guy standing in front of me, he said what I was thinking. That's a lot of things to read. Uh, and uh, the one standing just back, he said that, well, only if you do it. Uh, I heard this story before, but it actually happened when I started here. Uh, but I raised it because uh, I think it uh, captured the development I went through during this year. I started up as uh, the guy in front of me, trying to cover everything, uh, ending up uh, as more selective. Uh, <laughs> and I should say, <coughs> I should say as a point of clarity, the guy standing behind me was a top student. Uh, and uh, I, I ended up being more selective and, and uh, branching out in areas which I had uh, very little knowledge of. Uh, they told us to be leave our comfort zone, but being an international student here, there's no comfort zone, basically. Uh, so I studied uh, African security, Middle East history, counterinsurgency, and all those things that I knew I wouldn't need for my next assignment as a battalion commander training conscripts in Arctic warfare. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I came back, and only two and a half months uh, after graduation, 9-11 happened, and uh, my assignment was cut short. They put me in a suit, sent me to the MOD, and uh, I had the responsibility of providing advice to the minister on the deployment of forces uh, to Afghanistan, on how to deal with and, and uh, engage in uh, the war on terror. And basically everything I knew at that time came from uh, Fort Leavenworth and the, and the course that I attended. At that time, the world looked different, and we know, know that uh, things have changed. And uh, through the course of, of these 16 years, most armies uh, represented here have been uh, focusing on uh, capabilities uh, and skills to mass fire on Toyota trucks. Now it's time to move on and uh, come back to high intensity, large scale army operations in contested environments. We need to le relearn some of those things. And I think I'm particularly pleased to note the, the timely issuing of a new field manual, another one to read, but an important one. So my advice is to study it hard the new field manual that uh, was signed off by General Lundby. It will give you an idea of what uh, the trajectory is for armies. And you would be the ones that uh, actually make change happen in your armies, whether it's an international or in the US Army, because we need to change. And uh, you need to challenge your organization when you come back. That manual won't give you all the answers. You have to thrive in uncertainty. You have to find the answer. And this is the year to reflect, to make sure that uh, you've done the thought process. You will be exposed to new strategic shocks. And uh, your seniors, they won't give the answers. They will be in the counterinsurgency mindset. And uh, the graybeards here on the scene, we will, of course, think about the Cold War and we will underestimate the impact of maneuvering in the cyber domain, the space-based capabilities that we will be confronted with. So in essence, we put a lot of trust in you to take the next step and make sure that we'll remain relevant. In closing, I want to recognize the US Army and this great institution, not only for my personal behalf, but also I think uh, for the things you've done for the military profession. Without this institution, armies around the world would be <clears throat> worse off than they are today. So thank you so much. I'm proud to be a CGS student, 
Soon you will be too. When you come back to your next assignment, uh, your commanders will demand excellence. They should. But <clears throat> this school will set you up for success. So I encourage you to sp spend the, the time wisely at the library. Every hour in the library will help you downrange uh, when the time comes. I wish you all the best of luck. And thank you for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as we play the national anthems of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, Jamaica, and the Kingdom of Sweden, and please remain standing for the departure of the official party. On behalf of our host, Lieutenant General Lundy, thank you for attending our ceremony. 
Invited guests and international military students, please exit through the Commander-in-Chief hallway to your front left. Thank you and good morning.